Um, okay, you can see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, bioscience stable and RDC projects. Um, I should point out this, this is molecular bioscience, um, not uh, imaging bioscience or other types of bioscience. So I'm based at uh, the University of Queensland. I work at QCIF and the University of Queensland RCC and I'm also at Embel AVR. There's quite a few development partners on these projects. So QCIF and QFAB and, and RCC here in Queensland. Melbourne Bioinformatics in Victoria and the Centre for Comparative Genomics in Perth. Um, and the project's supported in one way or another by Bioplatforms Australia, Emble Australia, Bioinformatics Resource, the Atlas of Living Australia, and with funding from ARDC. Um, so just to provide a little bit of context, I guess um, molecular bioscience may be different to some other disciplines in that I guess its birth as a data science has happened in a relatively short period. Um, you've probably all seen graphs like this. This shows the, um, in blue, the number of sequences that are held in um, uh, a large international repository in the States called um, GenBank. And just to provide, I guess, context in a timeline, that arrow is when I finished my PhD. So basically we've gone from a non-data science to a data science in a relatively short time. Um, so, that's all well and good, but how many life scientists are really taking full advantage and, and sort of being part of this, um, the, what, what analysis of this data allows you to do? So this is just a graph showing um, estimates that have been undertaken um, from a working group uh, looking at an Australian bioscience data capability. And it classifies uh, biologists into four broad groups. And on the right, we have biology-focused bioscience researchers. So these are people that uh, working in the lab at the wet, you know, doing wet experiments at the bench. And this still forms the large majority of, of, of biologists in this group. So those people might go and use a, a web service once a month or something like that and do a look up, go to the NCBI and look up a sequence or do a blast. But they, they really don't necessarily um, engage more than that. So this next group here is uh, what we call data intensive bioscience researchers. And these are the group that is growing. Um, so these are people who may have um, decided to do a gene sequencing experiment. Um, they've sent their sample away to a sequencing facility. They've got the data and now they need to know what to do with it. Um, then we have a couple of other groups here which are, are, are smaller. So the, the bioinformatics intensive bioscience research group effectively use um, bioinformatics on a day-to-day -day basis in their uh, research and probably don't really do much wet, wet experiments. And then we have bioinformaticians here on the left and this is the group that are um, uh, developing new algorithms. So what I'm really going to talk to you about today is that the audience we're focusing on um, for the DEVIL and RDC projects are these, are these groups at the right. So they're the, they're the groups that are not you know, they don't have it all sorted out and they um, may or may not, or they might be easing into this data science world um, and need some um, help and tools to be able to do that. So the DEVIL project, um, it builds on the previous uh, genomics virtual lab work. So that was a Nectar funded project. And what the GVL is if, uh, essentially is a server image. So this server image contains a number of standard tools. So uh, Galaxy, I'll talk quite a bit about that, um, but it also has RStudio, um, Jupyter Hub, also command line access, uh, virtual desktop, and some um, administrative tools on it. And then there's a, there's a number of optional bioinformatics pipelines and analysis uh, tools that can also be um, launched when um, a server is, is a GVL um, virtual machine is launched. So the other part of it is, um, uh, a virtual machine that's running the server image and it's been built so that it can run on an open stack cloud such as Nectar or on um, uh, EC2 cloud such as Amazon. So that effectively is the uh, GVL. So the option that previously or still exists for people to use this is to fire up and self-manage your own GVL instance. Um, there's a U URL here, but the, 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 um, the steps for doing that are effectively on, if one was to use the, the, the research cloud here in Australia, is that we need to access the Nectar dashboard, 
the user has to get their nectar allocation. It's probably just worth mentioning that a trial project is sufficient for launching a GBL. Then the user has to obtain their cloud credentials, launch their personal GBL instance, access it, manage it and use it, and then shut it down. So that um, actually is still quite a technically challenging um, set of tasks for our intended audience. So the, the second option for um, using a GBL has been to use a public managed GBL service. And um, until the beginning of this year, there was actually a few of these. So there was an R Studio service and three Galaxy um, services. So one hosted by RCC at the University of Queensland, one hosted by Melbourne Bioinformatics and a training instance. So the DEVIL projects um, has a few broad aims. I'm not going to talk about all the aims, but um, the main ones are to rationalise and re-architect the public managed GBL services. So that's effectively um, taking these four public services and developing one single service, which is called Galaxy Australia, and that includes RStudio and JupyterHub. Um, that's now public. The URL is there. It's usegalaxy.org.au. Um, the proposed architecture um, that is uh, that underlies this uh, federated, I guess, um, model is that there's a head node. Um, that resides here at the University of Queensland in the, in the um, Research Computing Centre. Um, and there's a Sloan queuing system that submits jobs to worker nodes. So that's pretty much what um, Galaxy, uh, the Galaxy instances were like previously. Um, what's being done to, I guess, speed things up and make, make the, uh, the service more efficient is by separating off a database service. But then there's also um, this uh, new, uh, I guess, uh, component of Galaxy and they're called interactive environments. And it's possible to, to just launch up a single use virtual machine um, for these a number of interactive environments such as RStudio or Jupyter. Um, so they run on this Docker Swarm. So the idea of that is that it's just a VM that's um, uh, fired up for a particular uh, uh, session and then it's shut down again. So that's, um, that's what's here at U, uh, UQRCC, but obviously we need to uh, think about how um, we can increase the computational uh, resources that sit under a national service. So one of these is submitting jobs, not just to work nodes on uh, Nectar Cloud, but also submitting jobs to HPC. So um, Galaxy is pretty good in that it can submit jobs over a Sloan queue, a PBS queue, and some other queuing methods. So. Um, one thing we're working on now is also submitting jobs to the HPC machines here at UQ. Um, now, we're also uh, going to be submitting jobs from the head node using a Condor queue to a Condor head node that's sitting at the University of Melbourne. And um, because we can submit jobs from the head node to uh, either Cloud or HPC via PBS Slurm or Condor, um, we can also submit jobs to other sites and we're currently having some discussions with the University of Sydney who are interested in supporting Galaxy Australia as well. Um, the second main aim is to harmonise the look and feel with other global Galaxy services. So Galaxy Australia is not the only one. There's actually over 90 Galaxy servers around the world. But the two other main ones are usegalaxy.eu, which is hosted in Freiburg, and usegalaxy.org, which is hosted in the US. Um, I know Wojtek talked about a consistent user experience. So this, this project between the three galaxies uh, listed here is all about having a consistent user experience with, with similar tools, with similar uh, training material, um, with similar look and feel and layout and reference data sets as well. Um, I should say, so there's a, there's a global Galaxy tool shed. This is kind of like an app store for Galaxy. So when command line tools are wrapped and enabled to be using Galaxy, they can then be downloaded from the Galaxy tool shed. And we have a policy now on Galaxy Australia that all of the tools that are installed have to be installed from the Galaxy tool shed. And to get into the Galaxy tool shed, um, there's, a, there's a core set of tools that have undergone extensive QC. Um, the third aim of the devil is to rationalise and expand our existing training efforts. Um, so 
one of the one of the environments I mentioned previously was a it was Galaxy Tube, so that was just for training. Um, it will be eventually uh, decommissioned over the next few months, and we'll use the the uh, Galaxy Australia um, service for all of the training. Um, we have developed previously uh, Australia mit training material here in Australia, so that's being rationalised. Um, and there's also a global Galaxy. Uh, training material registry. So all of the Australian material is going into that particular um, training registry as well. So again, the idea of all of this is that it should be possible to go to any of these global galaxy resources and be able to use that material on uh, our Australian um, instance. Um, the project's also establishing a national network of, of trainers in galaxy. So this is happening uh, through the EMBL ABR network. There's a train the facilitator two-day workshop that's happening in Melbourne. Um, there's about 10 people going from around the country to be um, uh, given the same training and so they'll be able to go away and, and deliver Galaxy training locally. Um, and then we'll be undertaking at least three um, three-hour virtual, well, this, we call them virtual physical national training events. So we have a, a, a lead trainer that's based in one location and then simultaneously around the country, we can hold um, training events in multiple places. So we'll be holding three of those on different topics. Um, so I also wanted to talk about the sister RDC project, so the Research Data Cloud. And this one is, is extending Galaxy Australia so that it actually can support other national infrastructures that require a bioinformatics analysis functionality. And um, in this particular project, we're going to be supporting BPA's data portal. So uh, BPA's data portal, uh, it's used to uh, store and share framework data sets during the period where the, the, the team are working on them. It's based on a CCAN uh, framework and it's accessible to consortium members. So it's primarily a data repository and, and storage and sharing mechanism. It doesn't have raw data, I should say, it doesn't have an analysis functionality. So um, what we are doing in this particular project is linking up the two so that Galaxy Australia can perform that um, analysis functionality. So we're using it to support um, a, a group of researchers that are interested in metagenomics. So metagenomics is a methodology where um, you can get a sample, so it might be some something from the environment like soil or uh, water, and then you can extract uh, DNA from that mixed population, you sequence that DNA, and then you kind of work backwards to identify what species maybe what, what species were present in that original sample. Um, so to do that, we are installing a couple of tools um, onto Galaxy Australia. These are kind of, uh, I guess, uh, commonly used in this in this uh, metagenomics analysis. These are called Chime and Mother. So they're both being installed um, onto the system. Now, the second part, I guess, of a metagenomics analysis is not just determining what, what microbes are present in one particular place, but doing statistical analyses across different um, places. So saying, okay, so what's, are there commonalities between site A and B and C? And there's a whole plethora of types of analyses that people want to do. Um, um, so see things on a, on a map, do clustering, look at box plots, so on and so forth, ordination. And um, so there are a number of R packages out there that, that do this. Um, so two of them are called PhiloSeq and RIA, so they're pretty well known in the community. And what we're doing in the project is wrapping these so that these are available for use through the Galaxy um, graphical user interface. We see QAing of those wrap, wrap tools, depositing them into the tool shed, and then installing them from the tool shed onto Galaxy Australia. Um, there's also a training component. So we're developing uh, material for primary and secondary metagenomic analysis and depositing this material both into the global Galaxy training um, portal I talked about, but also into the EcoEd training portal, which is um, uh, part of the EcoScience um, uh, uh, DEVIL project that's, that's occurring. And then also delivering workshop across the Anvil ABR nodes. 
Um, so I guess the intended outcomes uh, over time, we would like to see that there are, we're enabling um, people, I guess, to move from one, one of these groups to the, to the next one to the left. So um, we have uh, over time, so we would, we would expect that there'll be um, more biology focused bio researchers that are moving into the, um, into the group to, are enabled to actually um, undertake uh, analysis and then uh, the group uh, moving or this, this group also moving across. Um, so I should say that it's pretty, both pretty short projects. So March to December 2018, both are on track, um, going pretty well. Uh, and there's a lot of people involved um, and they are all listed here. Okay, thank you.